So at this time, let me turn the meeting over to Steve Turnage, a mastering engineer of note we are fortunate to have in our section. He has multiple publications on the topic and is a futuristic thinker. Steve will in turn introduce our other featured presenters. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. First of all, I'll introduce Bob Moses and Diane Kraus, who are my co-hosts tonight. Uh, Bob was the executive director of AES, uh, along, among other things, for like six years. Bob, you want to say hi? I'll start with you guys. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, hi. <laughs> are you asking me to introduce myself more? or? Just yeah, let's do that. Let's do the self-introduction starting with you. We're going to um, go around. Yeah, so from 2012 to 2018, I was executive director the mothership. Uh, worked with a lot of people on this call. It's great to see old friends. Um, a little intimidating, actually. <laughs> There's some iconic people in this meeting, which is awesome. Um, you know, and then that ended in 2018. All good. I was just ready to get back from the lab designing stuff again. So I got together with Steve. We started a company and looked at doing decentralized music and blockchain, blah, blah, blah. And it got to the point where I was wanting to learn how to actually make the hardware for doing IOT nodes on the cloud. And so I went and worked at Microsoft or Microsoft Amazon for four years and learned how to do that. And now I'm doing that at, at drone company, actually doing communication devices for police officers over streaming audio video. Um, back to looking at how that works with music again. That's exciting to talk about tonight. I'll stop. Cool. There. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Uh, Diane is Hello. CEO of Jam Galaxy, which is a subsidiary of Singularity Net, which is a very interesting AI company. Diane, Hello. Take it away. <laughs> oh, I'm Diane Kraus, and um, mainly, first and foremost, I'm a saxophonist and a multi instrumentalist. And um, since I couldn't make any money doing music, I dabbled in data and marketing and loyalty programs and taught myself how to program artificial intelligence and learned a ton about blockchain. And um, I'm really good friends with um, uh, the CEO of Singularity Net. Um, he's known as the father of artificial general intelligence. And um, together, we are trying to change the music industry uh, with our knowledge of tech and bring that to uh, to musicians, music people, music um, communities, um, to where they don't have to understand what the tech is, but we make it easy to use. And as probably most of you can see right now, we're moving quickly towards the singularity, which is when um, machines become more intelligent than humans. And so my goal is to make sure that this um, intelligence actually serves humanity, helps humanity instead of... Um, whatever other options there are. So um, so yeah, I'm really happy to be here and I'm happy to see all your faces. And I'm not sure if we've, we've ever met, but um, it's always awesome to connect with music people. So yeah. Thank you, Diane. And, and another just aside is that when Bob and I were working together for our decentralized music idea, there was always a missing piece. And until I met uh, Diane and her company, there was, there's a, in their white paper on page 15, there's this, uh, this thing that had everything. It was the, it was the, a chart that said, oh, that is what I need. So it's been, we've been working on that for about a year and a half. I'm going to put up a few slides and Bob and I and Diane will probably be discussing them. If there's anything that doesn't make sense, um, please, check in and then later we're gonna show an example of this rune arc thing. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen and we'll see if it'll work. And there you go, let's go here and let's take the full thing. So, whoops, back, back. You're getting all the uh, previews, how about that? And another thing I want to do is actually put all of you up there in a grid so I can see you. Stand by. And good. There you are. Okay. So, Bob, I guess we should uh, 
let you uh, talk again on what we've been doing. Actually, let's go, and there's Diane. Let's go to uh, this. I was going to start with Weech here, actually, because um, I'll give a little bit of history. We had a music distribution system um, called Shared Media Licensing. It used uh, Windows DRM, and it was a super distribution system. Uh, you could, how many, how many people have used WeChair back in 2003 to 2007 at some point? There's one. Uh, feel free to, I, I have no way of knowing, so it's no problem. Uh, but what happened was you get a weed file and you could play it three times uh, before being asked to pay for it. And because it had uh, digital rights management on it, on the fourth time, it says you need to buy this or you can't play it anymore. If you chose to buy it, 50% goes to the artist and your user ID is stamped into the file. And you're encouraged to share it with as many people as you think might like it. And they can play it three times. If they like it enough to buy it, then the artist gets 50% and you get 20% for sharing it with them. And who you got it from gets 10% and who they got it from gets 5%. So the, uh, the if you get five people that like it as much as you did, then you make your money back and the artist gets six sales. Um, so it, it was uh, Windows only at the time, and I'm glad it didn't get much more uh, popular than it was because when it failed, then it's a challenge to, to solve those things. And then Bob and I here, I'll have Bob come in a little bit. We, this was what we uh, came up with in our plus Z. So we had like X and Y and plus Z is what brings you up. And Bob, you wanna do some uh, description of this? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, there's a lot on the screen. Um, I guess if you rewind back uh, maybe a few years and just remember kind of where we were at, uh, you know, before the internet, uh, the music industry and, and music distribution was, you know, the traditional record labels and record deals and um, record stores and uh, very limited options for artists and, and even consumers and totally centralized. And, you know, we all complained about it back then for being corrupt and evil and so on. And then the internet came and transformed everything. And uh, we complain about it still or more, um, but that kind of decentralized everything. If you remember, all of a sudden, thanks to the great work of JJ and, and others, you know, people were able to put good enough quality music on the internet and share it. And it turned into a giant problem for people trying to own it and make a living on it. And so Weed Share was kind of a brilliant twist on that where the sharing wasn't a problem. It was actually an asset, um, encouraged um, music to get out you know, in wide amounts. And it was monetized on people actually sharing it. And the artist came out ahead. It was really quite brilliant at the time. Um, so that as an idea um, was awesome. The first execution on Microsoft DRM didn't end up lasting after some changes uh, were made. And, and then I went and worked for AES for a bunch of years and, and did that. And uh, the world evolved in terms of how networks just became ubiquitous and cloud computing came along and, and then blockchain hit. And that was about the time that I left AES and Steve and I were just noodling on, well, what could we do? I wanted to make a widget. I was so ready to make hardware of some type. And, you know, and Steve and I make circuit boards together. That's like our music, which we've done for decades together. So I was excited to make a thing. And it seemed like a cool idea to make a, an endpoint on the cloud that would tap into music that was in the cloud, put there by artists, and then monetize not on the, you know, traditional you know, types of record deals and so on, but just on transactions that took place, you know, people listening to it. And we could build a weed share type monetization model on that. Uh, we could use blockchain or IPFS to have this distributed storage. So we didn't have to own it. It could just be everybody sharing their own drives or spaces. 
And then, you know, I, if we look at it from on this diagram from right to left, it's basically a file that has the media data in it and some metadata describing it. And this thing called a transaction patch, which Steve will we'll show next. So <laughs> later, it's kind of like if you think of this as a neural network, you know, it's the synapse that ties everything together. And then moving to the left, you know, from bottom up, you've got the artist working in a studio on a digital audio workstation of some sort, generating content that goes into the blockchain or IPFS out in the cloud. And then that ends up on an endpoint to the, the user, you know, the listener, the fan. And there's kind of a flow there of those plus Z files. And then moving even more to the left, it gets complicated now because there's basically a protocol stack there that goes from acquisition up to the application layer where the user is engaging. And there's various stages of um, acquiring a new piece of music, validating that it's, you know, provenance is proper, um, coding it and storing it and providing access and, and so on to it in presentation. And in those layers to the very left are a lot of options that at the time that we made this slide were things people were talking about a lot, exciting stuff going on. Our recording academy was especially very active doing um, high res audio and working with other groups doing RIN and DDEX and I won't get into all those things, but just lots of exciting new things going on. But they all were kind of like pieces of a big puzzle and we didn't know what the puzzle was. And well, this ladder was kind of our puzzle for it all to sort of fit together as, as you can see there. So we had that all figured out. We started a company plus Z that was gonna come up with the next music format. It's gonna be the thing on the right-hand side there. It's gonna tie everything together through blockchain and metadata and all, everybody having a piece of the puzzle there, blah, blah, blah. And then as a hardware designer, I realized I don't actually know how to build this thing. Um, endpoints for the cloud were a little out of my wheelhouse. And just uh, by accident, a friend at Amazon called and asked if I'd come help them design endpoints for the cloud. And so I did that and learned how to do it. And fun to be back in this meeting now talking about this again, because honestly, I've been in a different world for a while and knowing what I know now, it's a lot easier. But the world has changed. And since then, AI has taken over um, and everybody's talking about chat GBT now and Alexa and privacy and all this other stuff that wasn't really even being discussed back in the days of what you see on the screen. And um, it's exciting to think about how AI as an agent could help people discover new music or help artists get their music out and discovered and uh, keep it decentralized, meaning that you don't have any bad actors making all the money and preventing artists from getting up to their fans and so on. A lot of sort of utopian possibilities here from, from this type of a model, but it's a very fundamental change to how things work. You know, the people that had control and, you know, all the money in the past are not necessarily going to have that in the future in, in this type of system. So this is just kind of fun to talk about. I don't think we can claim this is going to happen. Um, but um, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, okay. Do you want to talk about the transaction patch next, Steve? Or? I certainly do. I want to, I also want to add a little bit about here is that what we're dealing here is these are processes. It's just like a, like a stack. And anyone that wants to create an instance of the process uh, is welcome to. Uh, like for instance, well, instance, uh, and a concept of process over instance is when you're playing music, uh, the music playing the music is the process and the results are an instance. So if we put out processes that people can use, then uh, we can select whichever is the the most suitable instance of that process for what we're trying to do. And that's why Rune came up here as a good presentation process back when we were doing this a uh, few years ago. I think this the last update for this was like 2019. And down here you have sound credit that would be able to deal with, uh, with metadata. We have a, a saying, metadata sharp enough to cut a check on. So, being able to make sure that people are who they say who they are. And the Creative Passport, which is Imogene Heap's thing, which is a self-sovereign, um, basically you're, you're everything, a passport of everything that you're involved with that you want to point out. And that still has 
um, a ways to come. You know, there's a lot of things that are nascent right now. And uh, we're getting, and that's why sort of the, the, the idea of horizons came up for me. Uh, so let's talk about the transaction patch. Here is a transaction patch, which uh, the original vision is if you have a uh, music service and you'd have the names of the songs and the artists and at the right of each of those lines would be a circle that has a aspect ratio in it. And you click on the circle and this would come up and the horizontal lines, the red line, so nice to be able to talk about this in, in public because I've done this in private so many times. Um, the red lines are the players the, of this particular song. And it doesn't have to be a song. It could be a, meta, uh, a, uh, a VR experience or any other number of things. But you have the participants of this particular uh, media piece. So you have the static media data. If it's a song, it's the, it's the, uh, the wave file or equivalent. And then you have the static metadata who are the people that uh, have brought this to us. It's like uh, bass drums. This is uh, our group, the Bats of Ballard. And I did mastering and I did guitar. And the, the vision that we haven't gotten to yet, but it has a potential and it's a later horizon, is you click on one of these uh, and you open their creative passport or equivalent, and you can see everything else they've worked on. Uh, and that would be in control of the musician themselves. Uh, and then these vertical lines are dynamic utility data. So the, the people that bring it to you, like if it's on a uh, blockchain or their manager or an aggregator or, or other service that brings this particular instance of this play to you um, are on these blue lines and these are dynamic, they can change. Uh, and like the weed share idea, if we implemented it here, it would have the share 20, share 10 and share five percents that are set around. And with um, the smart contract idea, um, this when you hit play, everyone will be compensated that's in this. There is an additional sort of future vision, which is as you're creating the transaction patch in the future, you can add a um, enhanced utility to when you lay down and, and stamp your say base track stem. Uh, and if you like that base track in the future, you may be able to drag and drop this line into a DAW and it side loads the, uh, the track and you're able to uh, sample and cut it up. And when you render out from the plus Z aware DAW, it creates a new transaction patch where you are um, in, in the transaction patch as one of the static stakeholders. Does that uh, make sense? Do I have any feedback from anybody? Any questions? Not, I'll take that as no. So about decentralization, one of the challenges as I was trying to think about decentralization is that you can't get your mind around it because that would be a centralized location. It really gets around your mind, so you're, you're, you're floating in it in a, a lot of ways. Um, the, one of the main ideas of here is uh, process over instance. We're actually processes of how to do things. Like if we go back up here, um, we send out processes that people can do instead of products. And then we select which of those instances are appropriate. And that's where actually AI comes in, where if you wrap these processes and the AI knows about it, then it can select and build these vertical utility threads dynamically. And actually, that's probably a good place. Uh, let's see. That's a good place. Let me turn it over to Diane and have her talk about uh, Sham Galaxy and SingularityNet. Cool. 
All right. Um, yeah, talking about talking about all of this, um, it's a it's a lot to wrap your head around. So, um, one of the main reasons that I um, I started this platform, and and it's 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 called Gem Galaxy. It's it's creating this platform um, that is for everybody. So I I don't feel like I'm coming here as a company to say, hey, you know. <laughs> take this product and, you know, make me a lot of money. It's, it's more like, Hey, let's use all this new technology, new tools um, that people really don't understand yet, but um, technology is moving exponentially. And, and I'm sure you could see it all around you right now, but there's um, so as we develop these platforms um, technologies, it's almost like it's, it's just ahead of us. So we're kind of surfing this wave together. And so this platform allows like all of us to come together and say, hey, how can we use this technology to advance our causes as musicians and creators and everything that we're doing? Because it's going to be a totally different world. Um, the traditional world is through centralization when systems allowed a lot of uh, people to be in control of a lot of other people. So um, the new technology allows us to to do things a totally different way. So when we talk about decentralization, it can get a little bit confusing for a brain because we're just not used to this kind of model where it's like, oh, you know what? You're giving me things. You're paying me for my data. I own my data. You know, advertisers are going to pay me directly. Like what? You know, and so it's just basically um, it's, it, it's going to be a complete paradigm shift. Um, so um uh it's just it's like a it's it's a concept that shifts the control of art and music and intellectual property away from all the central entities and um and then the power gets distributed amongst all of the individual creators all the fans all the collaborators so this just ensures a more equitable and transparent environment for anyone involved um and then this gives um, musicians in particular, and this will be for even more than music, but we're starting with musicians and music. Um, but it provides um, unprecedented control, endless possibilities, um, and access to cutting edge technology that maybe you wouldn't even know how to access. Um, like if you're if you are an artist, there's so many possibilities right now, especially now with new, this, all this new AI coming out and you don't even know where you go and, and you have all this content and how do you get out there and how do you, you know, connect with your fans in, in new ways that actually make sense um, to your community, to building your product, to building your art. Um, so we are here to just kind of redefine all of this um, just to um, allow artists to create, collaborate, distribute, and, and allow whole music communities to come together. So, you know, we talk about, um, and you're taking a look at that transaction patch, and that gets to your very minute detail, which would be the equivalent of like a synapse. So this is like, if you can think of this whole thing, like a brain, and it's all of us together, like just creating this new system for our world, but starting with music, um, it it really, it opens up so many possibilities because it, it eliminates the need for interme intermediaries. Um, it ensures fair revenue distribution, a global audience reach, um, seamless collaboration opportunities. And then um, the way I've been envisioning it is like each, each artist or even each person um is their own sovereign sovereign individual and you own all your data and you own all your music and um and um then you're able to with, with blockchain we're able to put things onto smart contracts to then be able to keep track of all these things so um and then as we grow and as we're teaching artists like how to market themselves um then we kind of grow into another level where we help artists, you know, learn how to like tokenize and create their actual own artist economies. Um, and this allows them to connect with their fans in ways that are kind of similar to like a loyalty program type of thing where you, you can reward your fans um, with greater access to your exclusive content, your songs and different experiences. And it, it, it'll be in a metaverse. Um, eventually um it'll 
it'll start in 2D. It, this is going to be kind of a funky transition because technology is going so fast, yet we're typically slow to adjust. So this is kind of like just trying out all these different things, educating people on, on what they can do, what they can use. So the whole idea is to like, depending on who you are and where you're at, it's taking baby steps on your knowledge to start to learn how to use all these different things to, um, to do whatever you want to do, connect with fans or discover new content songs, um, so, and then an another thing we're doing, which is um, in, in the artist world right now, which is kind of a big deal with um, a lot of the generative art is um, artists are getting, you know, angry about these models that are using their training data to train, um, you know, the different, um, you know, like dream studio or mid journey or that kind of thing. And these, these, these corpuses of art are trained on all the art in the world, basically. And then that's what the AI works from. And so in the Jam Galaxy, we're changing it to where musicians can upload all their music, all their treasure troves of, um, uh, you, know, you know, like for instance, I play piano, I haven't published a thing, but I have like 15 years of piano music. And so I would be able to take all of my piano music and upload it to be training data. And then we'd put that on a smart contract. And then every time my data is used in any of the models, the smart contract or the transaction patch or what have you can like trace that back to you so that you get paid. And, and so it'll work that way, but, but you opt in. So you opt in your data. So it's not anybody just taking your data off of anything. You say, hey, I'm gonna share my 15 years of STEM tracks <laughs> and, and that sort of thing. So we're going to be paying artists for the data that they um, decide to um, release to the different AI models. And, and then the AI models are um, creating tools that will help musicians and or or help or help you guys like you know we could get together we could talk about well how can we help you how can we help this industry um and how can we how can we take it to the next level because i someone said in the beginning if if you're not incorporating ai you're going to get behind really fast and and I, i'm in this industry so i see this happening so fast i'm sure a lot of you have already started seeing it as well and so now we've just come to the point where it's like, okay, well, what can we do so that um, AI brings out the best in humanity, brings out the best in what we do, um, like helps us to, you know, find what we're passionate about, helps us to connect with new music and, you know, new experiences. And, um, and it, so I feel like it's just kind of a time where we can all come together and say, okay, what are some of these new things we can do to, um, to have the the AI work for us instead of, uh, you know, any any other opportunities where you know people think that um, an AI might take over their job or whatever. It's just we're we're moving into a new creative realm where the AI is a tool. So, um, and and so through the Jam Galaxy, I'm 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 attempting to create something that um, allows us to use these tools for our benefit. And, you um, want to describe the Jam Galaxy band? Speaking of uh, oh, sure. yeah, taking over uh, <laughs> musicians, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm I'm actually my company. We're we are um, for, we we have a band. Like everybody in the company is also in this band, and it's called the Jam Galaxy Band. And and you can go check it out. But um, we have um, uh, if anybody's heard of Grace Robot, we have um, her sister, Desdemona Robot, and um, she has been being trained with um, spoken word generated lyrics that are trained on um, Philip K. Dick. And, um, and then my, my co-founder, Ben Gertzel, who's uh, a big, big well-known name in, in artificial general intelligence. And so she, we we have her. She's she's producing these lyrics while I, I play saxophone, and um, and all the musicians in the band are really good. And so we just we're making up the music in flow state, and it's super fun. And I know Steve, that's the kind of musician you are as well. And um, right. it, it's fun. It's like a playground. And so when she's like, she has these lyrics that are coming out and like, this is like an example of how we can use AI for creativity. It's just when I'm on stage and I'm in my flow state, I'm, I'm looking for like inspiration. And a lot of the time, like if I'm in a, a 
you know, a bar or something like that. I'll be looking at, at art on the wall just to go, oh, I can go here in my mind. But playing with this um, humanoid robot, she's saying these far out things that just just give you pause. But at the same time, you're like, right on. And, you know, you're just playing with it. And so, um, so that's kind of the fun thing, too, is like also... You know, not are, only are we creating this platform for musicians, but we are musicians and we are bands. So we're using ourselves as like the test model to to create and and you know create things that that'll work for us and work for our friends and and um, yeah. So it's cool. So I think I see this like a really challenging path, but at the same time, you know, like if we can all just be open and go, hey, what what can we do now? You know, together instead of instead of whatever. And I'm that's a good to. lead in. So now we're going to get to the to more like that, which is, let's see, as we go here, about decentralization and, um, and horizons and boundaries. So the, the, what we're going to get to is Rune Arc, which allows you, instead of having one to many, allows you to do many one to ones. Uh, and one of the ways of thinking about this that I ha have is that uh, instead of thinking as a boundary to pass, because boundaries have an opponent on the other side and require energy to maintain, horizons present, previ present previously unknown opportunities. So you didn't even know what was going to happen until you hit this horizon. And one of the things about horizons uh, and rune arc is that I didn't know how this was going to happen that I could uh, share like the plus Z ladder and all of that with someone else and let them actually take it with them and be able to have it, uh, you know, have it semi-permanent. And then when Rune did their arc that we'll be showing, uh, it knocked me out. I said, wow, we have just passed the first horizon of, uh, of music decentralized because we can use this thing sort of in incorrectly. Uh, this morning, I was thinking that these multiple horizons that we pass, and I'll go through them, uh, are almost like uh, tides as well, that are rising tides that are inevitable. And we need to figure out, you know, how to re uh, restructure ourselves so that we don't get you know, drowned, really, underneath, uh, well, drown in future shock. And uh, the use of Rune Ark in the way that we're showing tonight is like a small boat. We found it and made it into a lifeboat, a life jacket. Now other people can have their own. So that's the decentralized. They can make their own uh, instance of Rune Ark and have their own streaming service. And so we're just an example of the process that I'm gonna show you tonight. And the meeting tonight is, and this was supposed to come up earlier, actually, is to inform about the rising tide and the tools that are coming to help survive the shift and thrive, sort of a Noah's Ark parable, and that came to mind. Okay, so um, the first, I'm going to go through the horizons now uh, and then go into a demonstration of using Rune Arc as a personal and private streaming service. Uh, that we've used at the Players Lounge, where we have um, 2,500 tracks, 189 albums, and uh, we've put 25 up to show. So I'll show you. So with the onset of social media, the part of the way that the world is changing so hard is that everyone is now putting their personal and private information up on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and that just, um, it's like inside out. You've got the insides are outside. And now it follows that the public performance that used to be what you did perform can now become personal and private. So I can have a personal relationship with uh, my fan or another person that, that I really want to have uh, hear my music as compared to say, go to Spotify, we're one of the millions. I can go to a very specific person, talk to them, have them download an app on their phone, give them a username and password, and they now have access to my uh, our music. And if they're on Wi-Fi, they can download it. And the music's 9624 high res, and it has the art that we want to have. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had an issue where we were playing regularly, and uh, 
then we weren't. And so we started to distribute our music out in the standard fashion. And it was amazing because we gave them 9624 and asked that that would be passed along to the streaming services, but only 4416 came out. We gave them beautiful artwork and they would reject it because it had band name members on the artwork. And uh, fortunately, who we went through uh, to release these things into the world went out of business uh, a few months later. So we have everything back, but it, it was just not a good taste. So this is uh, this first horizon is the only one that is real and available now. So all the transaction patch and all these things. So let's say where the second horizon is. The second horizon is when, because this is a uh, sort of a misusage of Rune, what Rune is, it's a metadata utility that um, aggregates uh, metadata like power or water aggregate power from different power plants and bring it to a plug in your wall. Uh, Rune actually wraps your your music uh, catalog with metadata and uh, and you click on something you get the whole uh, story cross linked to all the different artists and it's a beautiful thing. It's a uh, it's $150 a year. Um, and when I first saw it, I said, you know, take my money, please, because I, I'm a mastering engineer. I've been mastering since 97. I have hard drives and hard drives and hard drives of different, um, different tracks that I couldn't keep track of. But now I have rune pointing to those and I can do a search. And within a moment, I'm at the uh, original uh, file to be able to upload. So what the second horizon would be if um, Rune would formalize the way that we're using it wrong. Because right now we're giving out our uh, usernames and passwords and we can only have in our library that's available to the outside world, just the things we want available to the outside world. And we aren't able to use Rune for its actual functionality as well. Uh, so that's one of the, that's that would be like the next step and these steps are like exponential so this is a very easy next step uh then the third horizon steve, steve yes. where where did these this concept of horizons and, and the numeric sequence of them come from my brain i was okay. I tried to figure out how to you know to structure this in a way that i can follow along sort of scientifically in a way instead of having a like again, the decentralization aspect, I couldn't get it all in my head. And the horizon came after I saw Rune Arc, you know, and how, oh wow, this is this actually is uh, the first stage of traction. And if that is this first stage of traction, what's the next stage of traction? And then so so successfully achieving these horizons, the end point is exactly Having, what you want this decentralized thing to be uh, and beyond our see the universe has a better imagination than we do if i plan something and hit it then i've shot way too low um the the different technologies and different people that are going to be using them in amazing ways i have no idea that's that's why i call it a horizon is because you get up to it, you can't have no idea what's going to be there. This stuff is emerging. Then you go over the horizon and say, oh, wow, look at that and look at those implications. So it's almost like a dimensional shift each time uh, you know, from 2D to 3D and then carrying on. Thanks. Yes, thank you. That's a, that's a perfect guidance. And if anybody that wants to jump in again, I, I it's good. So the third horizon is after I met Diane, and and uh, saw the singularity net vision, which is uh, anyone can write AI code and uh, create modules. And since that's the case, you could write AI code that wraps Rune, ASCAP, BMI, all these music things that are sort of inconvenient to have to go and find. You have to know how to do it, where to do it. And if you wrap these services, then you can implement uh, smart contracts that says, I want this 
piece of information from that place and the AI will be able to stack it up for you essentially and dynamically do that in the future. And this is when it becomes monetizable because you're, um, before this point, it's not monetizable really. But uh, the authentication, authorization and accounting this is where we come up into that uh, plus C ladder part. Uh, the fourth horizon is, is, is that no third one. What Diane's company is working, trying to do? Yeah, actually, it's uh, learning about Diane's company is what brought that in, and what's been we've been looking at. Wow, yeah, you know, getting it implemented is challenging, but it's only going to go faster and faster as we have AI assisting AI. You know, there. But yes, that's that's how I uh, that's how Diane and I sort of met. As um, actually, it's one of Bob's daughter's friends is one of the people that's in Diane's company's daughter's friend. Yeah, and they were talking one day. It was actually New Year's Eve of of last year. Of my dad's getting into blockchain music. You know, do you know anything about it? And Bob's daughter said. Um, my dad does that, they should talk. And then Bob and he talked and Bob said, you should talk to Steve. And I I thought it was just a you know, French hand wave. It was just a, another thing until I looked through their AI, the singularity in that AI white paper. And I saw a component structure that says, wow, there's the transaction patch. Here's all the different things. These are, the, it was the keystone to the arch that we'd been building, but kept on falling down. And so that's uh, unfolded a lot of it for us. And it was early, it was, I think it was last summer that we um, made this date, this March meeting to be this. And we've evolved even up to, you know, today we have new information. And so there you go. The fourth horizon is implementing AI assistance and smart contracts. So one of the robots that SingularityNet has is called Sophia. You may have heard of this. She's actually a um, a citizen of uh, Saudi Arabia, and Sophia's uh, little sister is the Grace and Desdemona robot that's the front of the Jam Galaxy band. But uh, and she's also not only in a humanoid robot form, but also online. So imagine an equivalent of Alexa saying, you know, called Sophia, saying, we just wrote a song, and then the response would be, okay, would you like to register it at this normal places? And yes. Is there anyone else that's playing with you? Yeah, it's this person. I see they don't have a creative passport. Would you like me to set it up? And so having that kind of assistance uh, through all of these things that you really need to have esoteric edge knowledge in order to be paid these days. Uh, so the thing about plus Z is that it builds on top of the existing world. Everything we're doing is still here. It's just, it's being able to be enabled easier. So that's the fourth. The fifth is the transaction patch. What we described earlier of tran transparent sampling and compensation. And that would be when you'd have DAWs that are plus Z aware and uh, would also be wrapped in AI uh, that would keep track of on blockchain, which is immutable basically, and keep track of all of these pieces. And the way that blockchain and AI are right now is equivalent to how electricity was understood in the 1920s when you have lead acid batteries, um, and, but you need microprocessors to make it work. Because um, when you have the lead acid batteries, uh, you know, what does this do? Well, it makes a light work. Well, it does more than just make a light work. You know, it, it, oh, oh, it, it makes a phone work as well. But no one was talking that well. People probably were about microprocessors and what that enables. So I'm looking for blockchain and AI to have a similar evolutionary thread to provide the functionality that electric current did when everyone only knew about the lead acid batteries. Yeah, so that's the vision of this this future. And the sixth and seventh horizons in that way 
they're emergent from these processes. And it's important to give, to understand that we have, we have no imagination yet about what can be made, but I wanna give those uh, a, a place so that we know that we're going forward from there. So, Rune, we talked about this. I'm gonna shift over to Rune. Is there any other questions at this point or comments before we get into the demonstration of our personal and private streaming service? Do you have yeah. any connection to Rune other than just being a customer? I am, a, I, I don't besides knowing the, um, I know the CEO, I am a paying customer, happily, the things I get from it are uh, so valuable. Also just to play music uh, and to find out the, you know, the, the credits of everybody and when things were happening. It's a fantastic um, interface that also is a front end for Tidal and Cobuzz and it puts everything into one, uh, one deliverable essentially. And their primary market is audiophiles who all, let's see, what, what do we have next? Uh, yeah, the audiophiles that curate their libraries uh, really quite intensely. And Rune, unfortunately, up until the 2.0 came out, is only works inside your own house uh, in Wi-Fi. You have remotes on all your devices. It can cast to Hi-Fi, can cast to Chromecast, and there are many Rune-ready devices. And the nice thing is that it actually sends the data and it uses the clock of the, the, the destination. Uh, so the audio is very, very good. And, uh, but the biggest complaint people had was that they couldn't get this uh, music outside of their house. And so Rune came out with uh, the Rune Arc, the app for iPhones and Android phones that allow remote access through port forwarding in your router. Now, uh, there we go. There's an issue about the port forwarding because I've got a T-Mobile home internet, which is like a 5G phone in a, uh, in a box, and it doesn't have any way of doing port forwarding or UPnP and the other ways that they need. So we have uh, set up, let's see, I'm gonna hop there, good. We have set up, let's see if I can go down and look at standby here. This is a vision of, uh, can hear you? there you go, uh, of a Rune instance that is down at the player's lounge, which is where we play. And we have uh, 189 albums of which, let's see, I can, I'm going to show, let's see, standby. There you go. Let's go back into Rune. Here, this is my local Rune. Uh, so here's the things that I've played in the last, uh, you know, few weeks. And for slower, each one, slower, please. Oh, okay. All right. Um, right. I'll just bring it to the top for any given piece, it actually gives uh, the credits. Let's go to something that has more known credits. So here um, with yes, it gives you uh, interlocking connections of what these people have done and their discographies. And um, it's just, it makes me happy basically. And I can also find the pieces I've added, which these are my my mastering clients. Essentially, these are the things that I've mastered recently. And uh, also pieces that I brought in from Kobas and my own RIP CDs. Uh, where this comes in is that this is our Players Lounge uh, library here. These are 189 releases that uh, of which some are ready to share, but I can't share them from here. Another thing while we're here, I'll show you the about page on Rune. This is 
where they license all of this metadata from, and which is a lot. And it just grabs it and you can, they, I'm super happy for how they're dealing. And you have uh, storage locations. And you, these, these are the ones that are connected to my machine with my audio data, et cetera. And you have services. So if you have Tidal or Cobuzz, they become presented just like uh, your own music library here. Uh, so that's my version of Rune that um, I can't use because my router doesn't work. But in our uh, Players Lounge, we have uh, our storage location, which there are a few things that are turned off, but our TPL, the Players Lounge release directory, is what we have enabled. And you can disable uh, different, uh, uh, different storage locations. And so we have the storage location of just the Players Lounge, and we have put over uh, these, uh, these albums. And if we go to a given album, we see that um, there's, the, there's the songs. We can go, this is actually an important part, is that we can edit um, the album here. And this is the Bats of Ballard. And if we go into here, I don't know if edit credits. So I can add, as I change this, that is changing in the Rune arc as well. So if I add a credit of uh, our drummer, which is Greg, it's, I mean, it's just this easy. So Greg uh, is on drums. And if I add a credit and I got uh, Christian Heilman on keyboard and he also did the mixing. So here is uh, Christian Heilman on mixing. And let's, let's call that done and for now, even though there are more. And then those credits show up down here, which is great. And this is a 9624 file. And now if we go here in, in the Rune Arc section, it's Rune Arc can securely access your Rune core. So that leads us to actually showing you the Arc um, application. So I'm gonna stop the share here. And I am going to start sharing on my phone. And at the moment, let's see, we go share. Yeah, there's all those people talking. And uh, share screen. And here it comes. Good deal. So any questions yet? Or so here, let's uh, let's go from the beginning where these this is the way it looks. Uh, to the person that you have here. Let's let's actually go back and start from scratch. So if we reset, then we go into a login page. And so here, I'm going to log in as uh, Greg, who is the account person. And so we log in. And here it gets to the player's lounge. And so what I would do with individuals when we would talk together, I give them the username and the password, they download Rune Arc on their on their phone, and then have them connect into the player's lounge like this. And online and ready, which is good. It's terrible when it's not. And so Greg Reed is the uh, account that he's our drummer and he's at, at TPL. And so now you've got what's been played uh, recently. And the, the thing that's interesting here is it's in the order, it's in the order of who's played it last. So everyone that logs into this personal and private streaming service, um, what they play shows up and in the Rune desktop 
that I showed earlier, it tells you how many plays it gets. So you can find out who's liking what in your music. And so if we take this, um, this is the lucky penny, uh, and go to track four, this won't play out, I am pretty sure, but it gives us, uh, this is 9624 uh, playing for your local phone. And anybody that wants to make one of these can do it with a Rune account. And right now, Rune's the only place that makes money. But for me, I couldn't build this um, streaming service for you know, $150. And so here we have also performs on these are the credits and uh, the production. So we have Christian Mixed I Mastered. If we go into my artist page on here, I get to see uh, everything that I'm on so far. And so that is really cool. And I can let people take it and play after we're done talking about Music Decentralized, basically. And so that's the example of the first horizon of music decentralized here. So come on back, everybody. And, uh, and any questions, comments, uh, or otherwise, I'm just excited that happens. And, and uh, Diane is going to be putting the Jam Galaxy Band on this as well. So I'll be able to access her personal and private streaming service as we get up past um the the authentication part so that we know that what's being streamed we have a way to know what's being streamed out isn't infringing or whatever then potentially rune can actually have a dial similar to web radio to uh to go through the different personal and private streaming services and as that pulls into more of the ai wrapped pieces then we get the further horizons and the vision so there, that's the discussion. Phew. Would it make uh, sense to show what the player's lounge means? I'd love to show the player's lounge. And this is uh, something that we got from uh, from David Shannon. Yay, David. So we're going to disconnect that. We're going to go here. And we're going to go over here and go... Here is the player's lounge. And this is when we get to be VR. We have over 400 videos. And this works inside of down here. You can see a VR, view in VR, where it's in the back of a sign shop. And this is where we play. And we've been here for about 10 years. Uh, this is the flat stock in the sign shop. And it makes for great baffles. It's amazing how well that works. And the sound in here is really good. The roof has uh, all So this is a real place that it is. can stand in and play music in. This is it a, is where we is stand in and play music. This is a fabulous uh, a studio to play in. I, I had the privilege oh. of playing a couple of times with uh, with Steve and Greg and um, uh, and some of my other colleagues and it's just just a marvelous space and then if, i think when you put the volumetric video on top of it to say that you capture capture these these live improvisational performances um it's it's quite remarkable and what we have thank you lawrence exactly lawrence is actually on many of those uh albums that we've selected to put onto our uh our rune art our personal and private streaming service and i've been waiting to give you the Username and password, Lawrence. Uh, the other thing that's cool about this is it is in the back of a sign shop. And to show just the place I wanted to be when I grow up, uh, we have that as a Matterport piece too. So uh, this is Reed Signs, Greg Reed. This is where the Players Lounge is, is back here. But this is his, um, his sign shop. It's down in uh, Fisherman's Terminal in Seattle. And uh, as we go around, this is his office. And uh, this is where he does a lot of the mixing. He has his 10,000 hours in. Uh, and he's, uh, he does all of the uh, album covers. And as we go 
out into the shop where amazing things happen. Whoa, we're back here. That's not where it belongs. Um, this is a CNC machine. He's part of a group called the Letterheads where they do a lot of pinstriping and airbrushing. And a master airbrusher came up from Australia and they wrote the player's lounge on the side of the CNC machine. And that is how, um, that's how we got our name. And uh, again, that's, that's right down there. There's the player's lounge and in our art. So hopefully that, that and the other thing about us is that um, we've never actually signed anything. And we use Quincy Jones exhortation of when money comes up, God leaves the room. So it's been challenging to try and staple that heaven to earth. And this allows us to do it without having to actually sign contracts. Uh, and, and we all have the capability of sharing out um, what we're playing in the resolution we want and with the art we want. Any other, please come, please come back, please join us. Uh, and let's see if we can, uh, maybe Dan, if this is, if this is the completion. So Dan, why don't you come on and tell us about your Saturday Tea Time topics. I'm very glad to have shared this with you all. If you want to connect with me uh, at a different time, and I can show you the, the, you know, the username and password, we didn't think it would be a good idea to do it in this type of a group. But also anybody can go and do this themselves and make your own library. And uh, it just will build here. We now have a little bit of traction to be able to have many one-to-ones instead of one-to-manys. And Bob and Diane, actually, if you have anything more that you want to uh, add to this, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, not that I can I can think of right now, but I just love starting this conversation. So if um, if any of you want to continue the conversation, please reach out um, if you have some ideas or questions. Um, I'm always open to chat with people. I'm up on uh, Twitter. You can direct message me there, or um, you can find me also at jamgalaxy.com and or through Steve, contact Steve. Um, yeah, and this is a, a community conversation for everybody. So um, it's been a pleasure um, meeting you all and um, hearing more about you and um, being part of this conversation tonight. So thank you. Um, and I have to go make dinner, so... Um, <laughs> Okay, you are excused. You are excused. Thank you, Diane. Thank All you right. so much, Anne. Sweet. All Don right. Hartley. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> See you. Don All Hartley right. says that he'd love okay. to jam at the Players' Lounge sometime, and that is part of what we're doing, and it is pure improv. And we I'd used love to that too, Steve. <laughs> yeah, we need you in awesome. there. Yeah. All right. All right so, Bob, do you have any uh, last words? Um. Well, you know, I just I'll wear my hat as a hardware designer, um, you know, for much of my career. And I got a lot of, you know, colleagues in the business here in this call, you know, being able to make the hardware and afford the hardware has always been a gating function. Um, that's not true anymore. The hardware is trivial. And, you know, for hardly anything, you can make an uh, endpoint on this cloud and stream 4K video and 9426 audio back and forth. And, you know, that's really blocked any of these sort of dreamy ideas from ever happening. And, and hardware is not the problem anymore. Really, there's just too many possibilities. And that's where this whole decentralization thing gets in the way, or I don't know, I find it confusing. I'm a very linear thinker. But as a hardware designer, um, I could be easily making widgets that suck all this great music off the internet and put it out in super high quality. That, that's easy now. So excited to see where this goes. Um, you know, there's a lot of hype right now about AI and chat GPT and all this and fear. And, you know, I think when it just comes down to it, it's going to give us a better search function and maybe a better way to connect people. But I, I hope it doesn't replace artists and human brains and so on. Actually, we were talking the other day and, you know, maybe the best thing that could happen for artists is if AI did become ubiquitous in creating music because everybody's going to get sick of it and hate it, and really valued actual human-made music again. 
<laughs> yeah, we become scarce. We become the scarcity. So we'll see how all that plays out. But uh, I think it's a good time to retire as a hardware engineer now. Uh, <laughs> it's ubiquitous. I'm, I'm excited to see what people's feedback questions are. Yes. Have yes. Anybody, go I have a question. Yes. Um, so I, I mix and master and I also do have a lot of artists and from when the art's done and I have a wave file, what do you think the timeline is for me to, you know, like, I know you can do the ruin arc right now, but, um, the, the smart contracts and all that kind of stuff. Cause that's very interesting. Like, um, to be able to tell my artists that they can have everything tracked and, and everything is accountable and, and it's just, it's going to, it's just going to make everything better, you know? And, That's a horizon. So that yeah. really, um, one of the things when we were in engineering, Bob Moses and I worked at a place called Digital Harmony and the marketing, we were in engineering, the marketing kept saying, when is this product going to be ready to ship? And yeah. uh, the answer was, how long does it take to catch three fish? <laughs> uh, it's, we, we don't know. We have to answer questions that we don't know yet. And okay. so when is the smart contract going to come out? There are companies that are implementing things like this now, but it's so primitive. They're trying to do microprocessors on lead acid batteries, essentially. Yeah. And it's it, just like the whole crypto world. You know, they, they got off on sort of a bad foot because it's not um, free like air, you know, in water. You know, Steve, I do, I do think that the, just the stuff that was just released in the last month with uh, 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 chat uh, GPT-4 yes. really holds great promise for exactly that kind of work. Uh, as, as, as draconian, as scary as it may be on other fronts, when it comes to things like legal contracts, um, clearly these large language models are able to, uh, I mean, you, you heard that GPT-4 actually could pass the, uh, the bar exam. Uh, exactly 90th percentile or 98th percentile so so this is a, a it is really and i know it, it was just last week but still this is if you're talking about contracts you know that's the kind of grunt labor you know that you pay you know a lot of money for a lawyer to put together yes and as you said it's 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 this very specialized niche knowledge they have to know all these details and this is the kind of thing again i i wouldn't hold my breath for like next month or even right. maybe next year but but definitely on on the horizon i don't mean a distant horizon I'm, but but two weeks ago we had multi-fingered images you know and now we have things that can pass the bar you know it was it's been it's it's a it's in a slope of singularity type it's just a matter of being able to apply it right which is why the uh, modular ai to be able to wrap existing things is going to be useful robert bob did you have something I was just wondering if you could talk about uh, sort of the relationship to the mainstream 800 pound gorillas when all this is going on. Is it a, a side stream or, you know, uh, they must be paying attention. Well, um, there's a there's a a quote of uh, it, from a book that I won't mention, but it's uh, what must you think of me? Because somebody had just done something to this person. And the response was, I don't think of you. And that was the biggest, you know, so what they do, they can still do. It, it's sort of remember that when uh, Napster came around in MP3s, uh, they could have shifted their model and gotten into the boat and risen with this tide. Instead, they tried to sue the water, you know, and uh, the sort of that lesson needs to be learned and it doesn't have to be learned if we can find other ways to use um, to misuse existing technology towards appropriate ends and then ask those uh, the, the providers of that technology to to tune it for our needs and then like for instance right now rune uh, rune are the only people that are making money from this and at this end of the long tail for us um, having control uh, of our art and our, our music is much more uh, valuable to us than the, the few nickels that we'd be getting and through the, the typical structures. David Shannon has his hand up. So David, feel free. I, I don't know if that answers your question, Bob. Excellent. 
You're muted, David. You're muted. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a, uh, thanks for this great talk. I just wanted to throw out this one idea um, that I think is really important to keep in mind. And that is that as AI is doing all this stuff that we can do, and yes, they can make music, and yes, they can even make beautiful music, and it can be indistinguishable from other people's music. But what I think it does is it actually increases the value of real live music from people. So watching someone on a stage playing something that they wrote and they did, I think is going to be, can't be replaced by an AI. You can have a robot up there, yes, but it's not a person. And that's what people, people are looking for people to people connections. And there's always gonna be people making beautiful music and that is not gonna get replaced. So I think that we can all take comfort in that. Um, I believe it's true. And <laughs> in fact, I think it'll be valued higher because right now it's a commodity. And I'd like it to be a soul connection that we have between, that's where the personal and private part of this comes up. Absolutely. A any other comments, uh, thoughts, desires? Uh, Hi, Steve, this is Alex, I have a question. Excellent, uh, hi, Alex. Uh, from what I read, uh, I think Rune at least limited what the streaming services were based on the bitrate or the lossless uh, sources. So if I were to use obviously low bitrate audiobooks, would that uh, be an over, over, will this be an overkill or is that convenient? No, no, that's a, that's a perfect thing. That's exactly the thing. It doesn't have to be music. Uh, I'm an author. I would love to do my books on tape out and, and to be able to tell you know, people to log in and, and be able to read that. It can be sermons. It can be, you know, church things. It can be Patreons, could be given the usernames and passwords, um, the fans that are paying as a way to find out what people are doing right now. And they just, they would be added to the rune of the artists or, and Books on Tape are a perfect example. And the other thing that you can even do, the, if one wants to monetize this is change the password every month and then ask for five bucks for the new password. And it's sort of like a, you don't have to go the, the decentralized part of this. You don't have to go through Patreon or Kickstarter or any of these things in order to be able to make these work. That's sort of the definition for me of decentralization, even though you know it is in Rune right now, they're the first instance one of the ways I think about decentralization is the atmosphere of in my room, I'm using the air to talk with. And if I have other people that are here, we're talking together um, and other people in the atmosphere are talking completely different things. And I don't have to know what they're talking. We can even be in many different places all talking in our air. And so rooms basically like the air. Um, other people could make scuba tanks or a way to, to live in space. Uh, with different atmospheres, but right now it's very convenient that we can use all use the same air. Um, and I think that's what's going to happen with AI when it becomes decentralized and is we'll all be using it in our own ways on blockchain. I'll be using it in our own ways and not have to do it. That might be idealistic. I don't know. But yeah, no, the book on tape idea I love because I'd love to give you, you know, send you 25 bucks and you give me a login, and I get to listen to your book on tape. I would love that. I have one other question. I apologize if I didn't understand this. Can this be a vehicle of sorts for virtual slash live concerts? Um, yeah, actually, the virtual live concerts, uh, in this case, probably not at the first horizon. But Bob, why don't you talk about the idea you had as far? Go ahead. Bob actually has, has written a paper on this. It's not come out, but the idea is a good one. Go ahead. It almost became another startup a few months ago, and then I got a really cool job. So uh, back on the shelf. <laughs> but no, the idea was um, I have friends who um, tour a lot and just work their hearts out doing amazing music all over. They got lots of fans. Um, they hardly see their family during the year. They barely make ends meet 
financially and I think it's just not fair and why can't they play a show somewhere and we just live cast it you know through the system somehow and everybody in rune can watch the concert live and then using that sharing model the weed share model you know people could say oh that was a lot of fun I'm going to share that with my friends and then a recording of that that's sitting in the cloud now gets shared out and propagated and you know all this great stuff we've been talking about happens just off that one live performance and you know one show could turn into thousands of views and uh you know and you do the the money math on that it gets really exciting and there's no central power there you know there's no record labels and ticket masters and stuff involved in that at all and uh so yeah i think maybe live almost has more application here than recorded music because there's so many solutions now you could just put stuff on dropbox or soundcloud too right but there's not a whole lot of ways to get live performance into a cloud out to people and if it just slides into this somehow easily that for me gets very exciting and in a future horizon uh the transaction patch is generated while uh, while it's recorded, it all gets set up where the venue has a, a line, you know, a dynamic um, compensation line. Yeah, well, to the system, you know, there's not a big difference between a piece of music that's recorded live on a stage in front of people or live in a studio, right? I mean, it doesn't become relevant after the first layer in that protocol stack. And, you know, again, it really, hopefully it gives artists a new way to reach out to fans and you know fan clubs in particular become a really interesting idea to play with where fans can share it's like the old bootleg tapes from grateful dead concerts you know you could put that into the cloud and and have a lot of fun with that this is very exciting yes that's excellent thanks don uh it's and it's sort of like uh you know a a, a match and fuses Maybe once it hits your fuse, then you know what you're going to do for the rest of your life, essentially. And sometimes it doesn't. So, cool. Bob, Anybody? how would you? I, I have a question about how you capture how you capture a live performance and put it in there. Okay, yeah. I've got it on my camera and it's on a USB connector. What then? Well, I wouldn't take it off your camera, Dan. I'd take it off your board. I wanted you to give me. 10 aux channels with stems on it. We'd upload that to the cloud. And then we could actually have guest mixers out there mixing the show, which is now just metadata to a virtual DAW built into your player device, yada, yada, yada. So the connection would probably be a little bit more complicated than just a stereo feed off your camera. And the wouldn't AI you, could keep track of it. Wouldn't you want a camera involved so you could see what's going yeah, on? Oh well, yeah, you want video too. I'm just thinking, you know, this was my concept of having basically eight streams going out of a show. Now it could get recorded there and then just uploaded too. It doesn't have to stream live necessarily. But and that allows for post-production and mastering too. So there's, and mixing. Yeah, Dan, you know better than anybody, you probably even taught me this at one point when I interned for you decades ago, <laughs> that, you know, the mix in the room there is not the mix you're gonna put on, you know, a file, right? So that's right. gotta be redone. So that just opens a, a vertical line in Steve's transaction patch for, you know, the mixer of what goes out on the cloud. And they That's get right. into the transaction patch. Now, every time it's shared, they get monetized into it. And there could be lots of mixers, right? And uh, that That's could fantastic. be superstar celebrity mixer, you know, version, or everybody could do a mix, you know, I suppose it gets a little ridiculous. But it's that's dynamic. Kind of that's localization as it's not baked yeah. into the, you know, one mixer picked by the record label or whatever. It's the mixing process that will be generated into the resultant instance. So anyone that can, can we again, shift out processes over instances. We don't sell products. We sell processes and people that use your particular process, then you get a line in the transaction patch and they get a line in the transaction patch or other, and that's where this, that's why you can't get your head around it is because anything that you have to limit it is, well, that's not it. Yeah. Anybody so, else? So, so I each had a question. Go ahead. Um, so, you know, one of, one of the, the existing issues is that there are very different, uh, mastering standards. 
So yes. uh, what I learned in my audio society, the Pacific Northwest Audio Society, is that it's not the medium, it's the value system of who has mastered it. So you might have a vinyl master that sounds better than CD or a CD that might sound better than vinyl or a digital file that might sound better than either of those. So that shows a, a variance in mastering standards. Yes. I'm wondering in this new protocol, if you can have some uh, more, you know, kind of, I mean, allowing for artistic, uh, you know, the production, the person mastering having their own artistic, but some standard where the quality is not so variable. Yes, here, I, I've got the answer for you, is that you'd have pre-masters that would have transaction patches that hadn't been mastered yet. And then with the permission of, because it's a pre-master, all the artists are still going to be paid, but you could have any number of people that would download that into their mastering DAW and master it and generate the transa the, the instance that is, here's uh, one of my masters, here's another person's master, here's that, so it becomes that many uh, varieties that you get. Uh -huh. um, so yes, the, the, that's sort of the beauty of it, of it sort of cracks our heads open, you know, right. to try uh, of what we can do. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Yeah, because we'll we'll end up with Dan talking about tea time topics. But I'm really glad let's, that we go ahead. Let's keep asking questions. Let give people a chance to come up with them. This is yeah. your chance. Right. Oh, by the way, here I'll I'll also say David Shannon is helping us get volumetric live streaming happening. So it's very similar. If, it's um, it's a precedent to all of this stuff, and it's still everything we're doing is so primitive, and so getting our vision—that's one another reason to consider the horizons—is that we are not at a pinnacle, at any way. We're just beginning, and if we can keep our beginner's mind, then uh, and let the universe make the set list, basically, then okay, this is the next thing to do. I will implement as I can. Uh, and then someone else comes up with things and keeping uh, an awareness of the global consciousness, basically, and what we're going to do. Steve, I have a, 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 a thought um, based on my experience at the Players Lounge on the, the couple of times I was there playing with you guys. Um, and I'm not sure how relevant it is to this discussion, but it struck me uh, like a like a ton of bricks watching it happen which was that your partner, uh, the, the owner of the shop, Greg Reed and the drummer and the, uh, the uh, mixing engineer, he would, uh, within, within days of one of these sessions, and we'd go for like two hours, right? So there's quite a bit of material, right? This live improv and, um, and, and because you had the studio set up that everything was, at least from my perspective, because I didn't have to do any of it, 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 it just all happened. I mean, we, we set up once we got our balance and stuff, then we'd play, you know, for an hour or two or three. And within a week, Greg would have, uh, you know, taken those pre-mixed uh, uh, stems, if you will, and he had mixed them. And that yeah. that um, that activity, which was very much real time, I mean, because I remember we did this, you know, and then I'd, and I come like a, a month later, we do it again. It was like a week later. I would hear these professionally, these really very nicely mixed versions of this stuff, which again- And mastered. And mastered exactly, and videos with the video. So, so it isn't like uh, this can't be done. I, I, I mean, in, in this kind of, it's a different mindset to I think to capturing the audio and the video of the performance, and then, but the idea that you would be capturing this, um, all of this data, and then being able to distribute it, I think is is mind blowing. Yeah, we do twenty four track uh, recording on a Presonus piece, uh, and. He'll uh, he'll mix all master. We have five or six videos, and one of the visions we have is that um, that uh, VR picture of the players lounge is if and this is David Shannon's going to get this to me eventually. I call it Pygmalion VR because I'm so in love with it. Uh, we'll have screens inside the VR place that um, are set up where the cameras were, so you can walk through the Players' Lounge watching the artists making the music that you're hearing right now, which is uh, conversations with instruments. Uh, we never pre, uh, 
compose anything. It's all, we don't even talk, it's like poor form to talk about keys and it, or to go into blues or whatever. Um, we just start playing and having conversations with instruments. And that's what's on our, um, our runes are on our rune arc here. And it's not for everyone. It really, it takes a while for some of these, some of these tracks are, you know, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes long. Um, and it takes a while for them to evolve, but it is a very organic situation. Like David was um, with us last Friday, we did a session and he was very excited about the music he heard. I was, I was very happy that he was. But it's it's almost a, I know this is a bit of a tangent to the to the theme of the of, of your presentation, but I think it's relevant because um, it's a, it's another aspect of music performance, improvisation, and um, for those people who for those um, listeners who uh, who enjoy that, which isn't all listeners, but for those who do, I think that with the volumetric video and with this real time. Uh, uh, delivery of these assets it it becomes um it, it's a unique experience and it's a way to enjoy uh, it's something that ai will never i mean ai could help maybe a little bit somewhere along the line certainly with the contracts and maybe with the mix but 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 it's but ai is never going to be able to perform like that because you get this not that we necessarily want to hear as compared well, exactly. to other things that are available Right. I mean, it's, it's that journey that you take as you, as you, if you can sit with it for five or 10 or 15 minutes and then you get to that magic moment like eight minutes in or 12 minutes in or 30 minutes in when when all of a sudden, you know, everybody gels and you get that that awesome thing that you can only get in live in live performance with human beings. And it's it's a remarkable yeah. thing. Yeah, it's the magic. I a, right. I had a question again, which is to do with, uh, you know, in the uh, meeting, you know, the fire or whatever the information was set up there was this uh, thing that in the chat box you know you download arc for your to your phone and a temporary or your username and password will be shared and we get an actual experience of how we uh you know access your streams that hasn't happened yes. yet it's kind of uh like somewhat theoretical right now and i don't really have like what you're talking about was going to be something real so like okay, okay. so what i'd like to do there is feel free to i'd like to are you on facebook by any chance uh i'm not um, okay no worries i'm going to put my email in uh in the chat and i am more than happy to go on a one-to-one -one zoom call with anybody here and uh let you turn you on to the players lounge there, so, uh, and for me, let's see, the uh, Davina.com, there is my email address. So if you take that uh -huh. and send me an email and uh, we'll find a time. And for me, my philosophy is uh, an empty calendar and a full life. And planning is a prison, but prisons provide food and shelter. But my calendars are very, very open and uh connect with me i can uh, you can give me a call we'll find a time to have a half hour that i'm more than happy to have you uh even after this meeting if you want to stick around you know we can do that so if i understand right then then we do get through this private meeting we'll get an experience of the actual access to you know absolutely Okay, that's good, you know, because then you yeah. can change your password. <laughs> exactly, and that's the that's one of the their drawbacks to this bleeding edge technology, which is defined as all blade and no handle. Uh, and this is why I'm waiting for the second horizon where security is better, because what I'm giving out is Greg's personal uh, rune um, credentials. Yeah, so yeah. someone could, a bad actor, could download rune and log in as him, even though it would be inconvenient because you can only have it in one place at a time. I'm sure it wouldn't actually work. That's why it's not a uh, it's not a critical password that's on anything else at all. It has just specifically to do with this particular uh, instance. But it'd be really nice to be able to send tokens 
to people instead of sending our own things. And this is where uh, David Shannon, if he's still around, uh, has great input and great ideas on how to get us there even without having it baked in to Rune. But the, that AAA authentication and accounting uh, is, again, a farther horizon. But yes. That'd be great because then it would really kind of sink into me as an experience. Like, Tell you what, will you do me a favor? Will you send me uh, through the chat to me alone? Yeah. Um, your phone number and I'll call sure. you when we're done. Sure. Okay, great. And if anybody else wants to do that, I mean, it might be late. Um, okay, Don, yeah. So um, Don, are, are you on Facebook? Okay, there you go. It's even so. Uh, we'll have to to cut that out. Yeah. So hit me. Yeah, up. we're friends on Facebook. So. We are friends already. Great. Yeah. The, uh, so I'll, I'll I'll ping you about this meeting. What a ping, what a fantastic yeah, ping me. meeting. Oh well, wow, thank awesome. you. I we it basically the, the slides happened uh, literally a half hour before the the show because last night we had a, a run through that was decentralized, which meant very chaotic. Okay. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> it was it was sort of horrible. Um and and Dan gave excellent advice and Kai helped me get things together. So so that I'm going to say, oh let me copy and paste this. I think this is a direct message and copy and then Okay, I'm going to get this down. Uh, all right, exit full screen and here. And I'm not sharing my screen, right? That's good. That's good. So compose and we're there and good. Boom. Yes. Okay, so now I've made a note of your number, Siddhartha. And David's going now. And uh, good. So outstanding uh and don so you're home i just got home yeah uh, my uh my son had little league practice tonight so i did the meeting ah. while he was uh, while he was getting his uh his baseball on amazing and you didn't even have to be in seattle no but man that player's lounge and the improvisational gym now nah, that's that's beyond uh amazing for me i'm a I'm wow. a drum set player and a percussionist, and I played in a, a lot of groups over the last third of a century. And uh, some of my favorite experiences are those uh, those deep improvisational jam sessions with my friends, which a lot of them we did record with like a line out from the board and a room mic and and shared them amongst ourselves and turned some of it into songs. But having this mechanism in place that not only allows the creativity, but the accounting it's just it's amazing so this 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 meeting hits the nail on the head for where yeah. my interests are um i'm so going glad forward with my career you know thank you thank you thank you um that's just that's great um because we had no idea that's the things when you bring there's three stages of acceptance the first stage of acceptance is you're crazy that'll never work what are you wasting my time for? What are you wasting your time for? The second stage of acceptance is, I know that exists, but it has nothing to do with me. And the third stage of acceptance is, of course, that's the way you do it. What took you so long? Uh, so when people are saying, that's crazy, it'll never work. I say, yeah, your first stage of acceptance. And so I had no idea uh, as we bring this out, what the response will be. So Don, you've, uh, you've made me very, very uh, happy with that. Well, you've made me happy as well. And, you know, I could, I could share a little bit. Um, back in the late 90s, I was playing in a group and we were playing around Vegas. And we were, we were some, somewhat successful. And a company came to us and asked if they, could, uh, if they could live stream our show. I mean, we're talking 30, well, we're talking 27 years ago or something, a yeah. long time ago. And... Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the name of the company. I think I got a sticker on one of my MIDI, my <laughs> MIDI boxes here of the company. But anyways, it worked. It actually worked. Here it is. Now stream. Right. Never heard of them. 
they were nope. trying to do something like this about 25 years ago and they they brought a truck in and they hooked up to the audio console at the nightclub and and uh, streamed it out it, it actually streamed and, and people from seattle i was in vegas people from seattle that i grew up with were able to to actually hear it it, it was cool it was a long time ago but now we're now we're here you know we're in a and and we've been through a lot between then and now and to see and there's a, a there's a lot of live streaming now in the standard manner in the big big picture and there's even vr uh, most live streaming that's happening um it's just that it's in the hands of other people and not in the hands of the artist necessarily and, and that's my biggest concern really is my efforts are put towards being a manufacturer's rep be, yeah. uh, to being a recording engineer, to being a backline technician or a front of house mixer or a monitor mixer, because those things pay my bills. But yeah. Well, my I'm a heart, circuit board designer. That helps me. Right. And, and so, but my heart's always been into the music, which is the, the reason why I learned those skills was to facilitate the music, but to put the effort into the music and then just have it go out to build up somebody else's, uh, e-commerce site whether it's facebook yeah. or twitch yeah. or twitter you or, are the product instead of oh i'm just i'm helping I'm, I'm 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 tending their crop but yep. i'm not getting any of the food from it well you know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm, <laughs> so this is this is why it's exciting to me because I'm this thrilled. is what what needs to happen for me to have the faith in in the process to be able to continue on the creative side and not so much on the engineering side and keep our eyes open for these things. So, Steve, do you have a Steve? You up, Savannah? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I turn turn my mic on because I'm what you see behind me. That is my bistro. That's my equivalent to your players' lounge. Yeah, and I haven't really done too much because of the pandemic. But before the pandemic, we were bringing people in and and doing little events, almost like a house party live streaming in Northeast Ohio, there are a number of individual artists that are doing some pretty amazing live streams. I'm also the live stream guy in the Cleveland area. In fact, we did one today for a group called Nine Lives that was live streamed into schools as part of a uh, pro project that the uh, local music musicians union is working on. Um, the cool thing about live, and I've been live streaming since 2013 when I was doing Ask Me Anything yeah. events for Audio Technica <laughs> yes conventions where we'd set up a stage, we'd bring in cameras, and uh, we would, you know, Ed Cherney would be on, on stage and you could ask him anything and people could tweet questions to him on a Twitter feed and using all those tools kind of the way they were meant to, to be done. The, the yeah. cool thing is, is the technology, as in recording technology and, and audio technology, is getting better and better and easier and easier for people to use, which is really cool. And someone can someone can literally do a pretty decent live stream with a smartphone if they know some of the tricks of the trade. And we're live streaming now, really. Well, yeah, yeah in a way, we're live Definitely. streaming now. Um, yeah. The uh, I play but some. The, but the quality, the quality of, of the productions is getting better and better, even on that real local level, which is really kind of cool. Um, the, the big issue is how do you monetize your live streams? And, you know, people do yes. the virtual tip jars and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, of course, you're live streaming to some social media platform like YouTube or Facebook or, um, or, or whatever. Facebook and YouTube are the two big ones. Uh, yeah. I've done, I've done, I, I have the capability of doing a, what they call a widget that is a thing that can be embedded into a website. So when the stream goes live, it notifies, um, you know, people that you know, want to get notified that the, you know, the website is doing something. And right. uh, that's, that's another way to do it, to get around the whole U, the YouTube and Facebook and all of their weird criteria. Right. But we've been doing a lot on Facebook because Facebook, everybody knows how to get to it. And you've got interactivity with your viewers via the chat and you yeah. can monetize and you can, um, you know, virtual tip jar through, you know, PayPal or one of those, you know, Venmo or one of those things. And, and people actually 
we've done pretty good with it. Um, I like the fact that as it starts to move forward and evolve into the next next level, um, the one to one is you know is the next horizon or whatever you, you're right. saying. Um, right. I, I think there's there's all kinds of opportunity to do that. The, the big issue, one of the big issues I see is, you know, they bring a concert into town and. I don't know who it was, but the concert tickets were like a couple hundred dollars to go see some performer. And a lot of people can't afford that, but they can, um, they, they can watch a live stream. And even though we're coming out of the pandemic, it's not over yet, but we're coming yeah. out of it. And a lot of the, I, I do live events and a lot of live events are coming back. Um, people are still doing live streams just because it's kind of nice to sit at home and enjoy something without having to go to a place and it's what uh, we're doing literally yeah i mean well, you're soaking in it <laughs> yeah exactly and it's and it's and i there was an article in the new york times on sunday that says what happened to all of our zoom meetings when the pandemic mm -hmm. hit we were doing the you know the virtual cocktail hours and the zoom get-togethers yeah. yeah. this is one that still goes and it's a, and i look forward to this i look forward to the hollywood sapphire groups zoom um i'm involved in a zoom group with uh karen dunn and a, a bunch of people from the audio industry as well and it's nice that i'm meeting with people on the other side of the country from where i live and and the social aspects of it and we've done I've been on some of these where we have the afterglow when the official meeting is over and it's been two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning when we're done and we have, we've had a great time and I look forward. We're, to we're in that right now. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're kind of in that right now. And I, the, I, go ahead. But as the technology keeps getting better and better and easier and easier for people to use, I think there's, there's going to be more opportunities for people to get their material, uh, performance material, music, whatever out there and i think you know podcasting is another aspect of that so we're going to do volumetric podcasting from the players lounge as well that's cool that's cool yeah it's exciting um i want to start wrapping up if we can unless there's more burning questions and uh dan yes Alex. Can do small quick questions absolutely that's what we're here for thanks steve uh, so I, I initially thought this was primarily audio streaming, but it looks like you can do video as well, or is that part of not it? in the, not in this horizon, not at the the Rune Arc. It's literally, but it can be high res audio. It's it's audio that um, you have on your uh, machine that other people can uh, go through your router in order to access it if you give them the credentials for it. But right now it's only and when something comes out where it is video, that'll be great, where we have our personal and private streaming service, which is like Zoom is one, but not on demand. You have to be in both places. The thing with the with the, the ARC is that it's on demand. It's always there. I don't have to turn it on. Whereas if I'm in a Zoom deal with video, I'd have to turn it on. So I think that still has to wait for a couple of horizons out or the tide to rise a little bit more. And then the last question, um, if from a user experience perspective, if there's connection quality issues you know, on the transport layer, like the wide area network or local network, is that yes. handled by the negotiation and management? Is that done by the wide area network or does your software stack do something? Um, the software stack, it connects through, uh, you know, a port. And if if you have bad Wi-Fi, then uh, it'll probably drop like usual. But it also does sell data, of course. And um, it's the same as any other media. The, the problems we had when we first set it up was... Um, like the computer it was on was set to go to sleep after 30 minutes of a new, no use. So when Greg would go home, I was trying to log into my Rune Arc and no servers found. And then we found out, oh, he's turned on the power options. And then for a weekend, there was a, a switch, an uh, Ethernet switch that was unplugged. And so finding all of these things and making them solid, they're, they're not the technology's problem. 
it's just more utility. So nothing is uh, set to be fixed when things go wrong unless we fix them. So that's where responsible. That's the other thing is when we're using other streaming services, we don't have to worry about their infrastructure. In this case, the trade-off of being you know, self-sovereign is you own it. And anything that goes wrong, it's your responsibility. If you stream like infringing works, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, that's why I recommend that we stream what we, in this case, stream what we own, you know, specific, and have rights to at this time. But in the future, potentially, there will, when transaction patches come around and we are streaming something, th on that transaction, the original artist will be compensated. And that's the that's sort of the beauty that we'll say, oh, we had problems with that in the past. So many things that we evolved past, we look back and say, man, how inconvenient was that? You know, when there's no video on your phone, no camera in your phone. Where is that from? Yeah. So did that answer those questions? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Okay, anybody else? Because we're 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 getting into pumpkin time pretty soon. Yeah, Damn. people who haven't asked anything, I don't want you to leave with questions. So this is your chance. Is uh, is anybody um, in this meeting going to be at the uh, NAB show or the NAM show this year in April? I have to miss NAM again this year. That's sad. I was at every one for decades, but next time, next year. I don't about think people anybody who else haven't spoken. 2024 NAM for me because I've got gigs this year. Okay. Anybody who hasn't spoken who wants to ask a question, this is your chance. Looks like that's it. So, Dan. All take right. Us Thank out. you, Steve and Bob. It worked out. Thanks to you. And everybody. Well, I think it was thanks to you. So you wanted all... me to talk about tea time topics, which is a Please. thing that I started during the pandemic so that I had something to do on Saturdays. And uh, we're going to do our 127th this weekend, I think, in the series. And Bill Gelhouse is actually hosting it because I'm, I've got a gig, but we uh, share projects. The way it's evolved is that people share projects that we've been doing and pictures are ideal and recordings are fine and uh, talk about that stuff and there's a few people who repair stuff for a living repair audio gear for a living and they'll show us something that's in progress or show a question that they've had and and uh, we start at uh, 3 p.m seattle time uh, so it's 8.30 now, Seattle time, roughly. So you can calibrate yourself to what that is. And uh, we figure out that we can see and hear each other. And then at 3.30, we start in on it. And uh, it's somewhat informal like this has been, uh, or even maybe more informal. And sometimes somebody has a, a presentation they want to show. Uh, we had somebody a couple of weeks ago, uh, show, I don't, I'm, I'm blanking here, Gary, uh, or, or Bill, what, what, what was our last present actual presentation? Was it Matt Sutton talking about his years recording the Seattle opera or was there was something one of them. that was one of them? Yeah. There's been a whole bunch and it's, it's fun to see and hear people. And uh, I, Weber, if you're going to talk, Weber showed us, we, he walked around his neighborhood in New Delhi and uh, uh, showed us that. And I love mm -hmm. that because things that we take for granted, people, anybody takes for granted in their locality as being the way things are done. Other people in the world have other ideas. And uh, we go for about four hours. And I have to argue with people <laughs> almost to end the day, which is great. 
And uh, if you want to come to it uh, this Saturday, um, like I said, Bill Gelhouse is hosting, but he, there he is. Mm. And uh, you could either PM him here or in the Eventbrite thing. I do that. And when you reply, when you send a message to the organizer in Eventbrite, I get that. So I can pass on the uh, URL for this Saturday before Saturday. I'm busy Saturday, but if you send something tonight, I'll get it. Or you could send it to Bill right now, and he'll respond to you. And, and Gary uh, put a link up as well in, in the well, chat. Well, that's to uh, a General. description of what Tea Time Topics is. It's you won't ah. get there by clicking that. So that's it. Okay. Um, hey, everybody. Nice Look what job. We did. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Bob. I know this is late for you now that you get up at crack of dawn. Uh, I have to catch a six o'clock AM ferry boat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Bedtime. Okay. Um, I'm about to call Don Hartley and Siddhartha and get our, I should probably get their email addresses and uh, give them the, 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 uh, the launch codes for this. And uh, other than that, you all have been a wonderful audience. And I am so infinitely grateful to be able to talk to you. Oh, here's my weed share shirt. Matter of fact, this is where, this is uh, music oh, yeah. decriminalized back in the day. That's sort of where music decentralized came from is uh is in that point because at that time people were being sued for sharing music and so we had a structure super distribution where you got paid for sharing music so you go don i'm going to give you a call Sitartha, i'm going to give you a call actually if you if somebody both of you i put my email address in there don and Siddhartha, please email me your email, and I will respond with the Zoom link I'm about to make. And if somebody else wants to as well and get in on uh, this thing, you're welcome. And it'll probably not happen till, I mean, it'll happen immediately, but it probably won't go much later than a half hour from now. Too. So good. Everybody good? Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Getting, All right. Uh, thanks so much. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good Gary, night. Gary, why don't you hang on for a minute? You and I will chat. Yeah.